Hello and welcome to Next Stop News, a series created to inform the transit community about events occurring within the system. Here's what we'll be discussing in this month's installment. Due to the manner in which recent events have unfolded, I will not start off with the R211s as I usually have in the past. Instead, I have to announce the end of an era. Manhattanville Depot ended their old gen era on October 5th, 2021. The ultimate end of the last few old gens at the depot was catalyzed on the evening of September 15th, when one of the final three, as they've been dubbed, 6693, broke down on the M4 at 164th Street in Fort Washington. It did not re-enter service since, despite Train C displaying September 20th as its final day in service. That was a glitch. On September 20th, 6709 and 6724 performed their last runs out of Manhattanville on the M96 and M106. On September 21st, either to make up for a gap in LFS HEVs or to get one final usage out of the old gens before the ultimate end arrives, Manhattanville borrowed five to six old gens from Mother Claire Hill, a move no one expected. The borrowed units were 6770, 6776, 6783, 6785, and 6789. 6786 may have also joined the party, but we'll never know. This is because it had a broken tracker from September 6th to October 14th. These ran on the M3, M10, and M98, and M116 as well. On September 22nd, however, 6770, 6776, and 6789 went back to hail while 6785 did a final run on the M2, the last ever run of an old gen on a Manhattanville route. On the same day, it was revealed that 6709 had been transferred from Manhattanville to Quill, and on the next day, it was revealed that it even had Quill stickers. On September 23rd, 6785 had returned to Hale, leaving only 6693, 6724, and 6783. On September 25th, 6724 was towed out of the Manhattanville lot to East Chester Scrap, and on September 29th, 6783 was confirmed to be a training bus. This left only 6693, which made it into the early days of October, and got the honor to sit next to the option order LFS HEVs, despite not seeing service for half a month. On October 5th, it was spotted by Velocity 5931 being towed to East Chester Scrap, as seen here. Credit to him for the photos. This unit resisted the winds of change until the bitter end, and has earned itself a place in the history books as not only the last old gen physically at Manhattanville, but the last 6600 series Orion and passenger service. So, 6693 was the last old gen to be on Manhattanville property, though 6709 and 6724 were the last Manhattanville assigned old gens to run in passenger service. 6783's last trip in passenger service was on a Manhattanville route, despite it being a hail bus, and 6785 was the last old gen to ever run on a Manhattanville route. Yes, I'm not counting Quill school trippers on the M11, because as far as I know, the Quill school trippers don't even use old gens for the M11 anymore. Technically, 6693, 6709, 6724, and 6785 all crossed the finish line together. The reign of the Manhattanville old gens is now finished. This leaves Hale, Quill, Tuskegee, and Queens Village as the last New York City transit depots with revenue old gens. Now, Manhattanville only has next gens and LFS HEVs. Every bus that is transferred or retired from the depot at this point going forward will be a next gen hybrid. 6693's retirement marked the end of an era once and for all. F for the old gens at Manhattanville. They will be dearly missed for their 16 dedicated years of service. At one point, they were almost the sole staple of the depot's fleet. Now they are nothing more but a mere memory. Some will view them as a fleet gone too soon, while others will move on to embrace what the future has in store for the depot. I, however, will always view the second gen pluses as the buses that gave a second and final chance to enjoy the old gens at Manhattanville after the first and second gens were long gone. With that said, I am now moving on to the 38 and 4200s at this depot. In addition to the old gens retirement, some next gens were shifted from Manhattanville to other New York City transit depots. 4330, 4332, and 4340 were sent to Gun Hill and 4360, 4396 to 4398, 4400 to 4401, 4403 to 4405, 4413, 4416, 4580 and 4581 were sent to Queens Village. Category 1 lithiums were also sent out, such as 4090, 4092 to 93, 4095 and 4097 to Fresh Pond, which increased their total to 84 next gens and made up for the shortage caused by retiring the second gen pluses back in December 2020. 
Manhattanville even sent out some 4200s, the ex-Yukon Spectrum units, to Queens Village and JFK. This is so awesome! The first 4200s to go to Queens Village were 4263 and 4265, which transferred on October 7th. 4248, a howling next-gen, transferred to JFK along with 4353 between October 14th and October 23rd. Manhattanville sent 4,000, 4,007, 4,011, 13, 16, and 4056 to Queens Village. They also sent 3844, 3867, and 3944 to Mother Clara Hill to help both depots retire or shift out their old gems. This reduced Manhattanville's total of lithium next gens to 104. The depot's hawker count stands at 48, which would have made for a total of 152 remaining next gens at Manhattanville. Queens Village had 65 next gens, and JFK has 74 next gens. Mother Clara Hale retired old gens 6706, 6760, 71, 78, 79, 82 to 83, and 85, as well as 6789. 6765, 70, 76, and 86 were sent to Tuskegee, reducing their total to two active old gens. Yep, we're in the single digits now, and Hale's old gens have therefore become super rare and hard to find. 6706, 60, 82, and 83 actually went to Zariga to become training buses. Next Gen 3831 also returned to service after a long hiatus since mid-August. 37 Hawker Next Gens are at Hale. Quill retired old gens 6711, 17, 6726, 32 to 33, 35 to 36, 43 to 47, and 50 to 51, reducing their total to four old gens. 6736 was sent to LaGuardia as a parts bus and was subsequently sent to Eastchester Scrap. The retirement game stepped up heavily at this depot, as many old gens that had recently seen service were instantly retired two to three days later. It's safe to say that the old gens in Manhattan are almost history. East Chester Scrap is currently loaded up with old gens. Queens Village old gen count remains at 43. These will be the last active old gens out of New York City Transit, but be mindful, they don't run at all on weekends. And they have a limited time as the ex-Manhattanville next gens are replacing them currently. We also had some unexpected retirements due to Hurricane Ida. 9, 20, 11, Orion 7 3rd gens were impacted by flooding. 70, 47, 49, 58, 65, 71, and 70, 76, 6 units were retired. With 70, 54, and 70, 86, 2 units pending. This was highly unexpected as those buses were under 12 years old. But this shows you how badly water damage can destroy a perfectly functioning vehicle. 5 2015 LFSs, 3 2019 LFSs, 2 2008 CTs, and 4 2015 to 16 Prevos were also destroyed in the flooding. If you want to have a more detailed outlook on the events which occurred, please check out the video The Tragedy of the Third Gens. The link will be in the description below and in the video itself. One third gen was able to be saved from Ida's impacts, however, that being 7001. Nevertheless, as Castleton was still 16 buses short due to Ida, they received 5 LFSs from Kingsbridge, 5 from Gun Hill, and 6 from Queens Village. They got 8324 to 28, 8369 to 73, and 8480 to 8485. And Castleton currently has no more shortages in the local fleet. To replace some of the transferred LFSs, Kingsbridge, Gun Hill, and Queens Village all received extra next gens from Manhattan. The premature loss of two 2008 CTs, 2220 and 2225 from Ida, brought Castleton's total from 10 to 8 D4500 CTs. They now have almost as few MCIs as Yukon did before the 2021 Prevost began arriving on Staten Island. To fix the shortage, 2703 was sent to Castleton, and 2702 might have been sent as well, but this is currently unconfirmed. 2424 and 2441 were sent to Meredith. Charleston retired 4313. On October 12th, however, Charleston did the unthinkable, receiving 2005 CLs, 3069, and 3072 from Yonkers, MTA bus of all places. This shocked everybody, as it marked the first time the New York City Transit has used MCA bus MCIs since 2009. The transfer was legal, as the MTA bus CLs were not federally funded. On October 21st, it was revealed that Yonkers also sent 3071, 3074, 76, 87, and 96 to Charleston. These units bumped Charleston's D4500 CL total from 20 to 27. Meredith has 20 2012 Prevost, 23 2015 to 16 Prevost, 422 if 2702 was confirmed to be sent to Castleton, and 30 2021 Prevost. 
I expect 1587 to 1606 to come in alongside the MTA bus Prevost. By now, the Staten Island coach shortage should be fixed because of all these transfers. By the way, those MTA bus Prevost are rolling in like hotcakes. First and foremost, once 2020 Prevost 1301 finally arrived to College Point, it did retire 2910 after all. As of September 9th, the oldest bus in the system from 2002, the last Detroit diesel-powered bus as well as the very last flip dot in MTA history, is now decommissioned. It was officialized when it was removed from TTMG's roster on September 10th. The bus is still visible at East Chester Scrap, however. The current oldest bus in the MTA is 2004 MCI D4500 CL 3001, also housed at College Point, as 3000 hit the dust earlier due to a broken axle on September 23rd. As of now, there are no active MTA buses that are older than I am. 1338 rolled into College Point on October 22nd, marking the first Prevost that College Point has received besides 1301 since March 24th. Over the month of September, Far Rockaway increased their total from 1 to 14 Prevost. They now have 1438 and 1440 to 1452. This allowed the depot to shift CLs to other depots. JFK received two Prevosts for training, 1399 and 1454. Yonkers received 1453, which was their sole Prevost until 1455 to 1460 and 1472 rolled in. 1453 was basically an official version of 23. This quick delivery rate is what allowed Yonkers to give two CLs to Charleston in the first place. On October 15, 1492 arrived at Spring Creek and 1495 to 1496 joined it on October 18. This means that 1492 to 1526 are assigned to Spring Creek and 1527 to 1556 will be split between Basie Park and LaGuardia. Spring Creek currently has 1492 to 1496 and 1499, six Prevost total. They are expected to receive 35 in total. With the current pace of Prevost delivery, Spring Creek and LaGuardia will hopefully receive half of their allotments by the end of November. A lot of MCI trading is occurring between the MTA bus depots. They're really playing hot potato with many of the CLs right now. Since last month's update, both Nova and New Flyer have been ramping up on their deliveries to my elatement. Manhattanville made up for lost time with their LFS HEV order, receiving a waterfall of new hybrids in September and October. 9669, 71-74, 88-91-94, 97-07, 31-34, 36-41-42, 46-48-51-54-55, 58-60-61, 64-66-69, 75-76, 78-80, they even began work on their option order. Between September 30th, 2021 and now, they have received 9803, 9806, 10, 12, 29 to 32, and 9844, nine units total. The first option order to hit service was 9831 on the M10 on October 5th. These 37 HEVs increased Manhattanville's total of LFS hybrids from 53 to 90, meaning the number of Novas at the depot now greatly exceeds the number of Hawker XT next gens left at the depot. It was also more than half of the overall next-gen total at the depot before what I will describe next happened. This is also why you saw a lot of next-gen transfers, as the depot was prioritized over Kingsbridge, Gunhill, and Tuskegee. The reasons why Manhattanville was prioritized were, they had to retire all their old gens, which is now accomplished, they had to send next gens to Queens Village and Hale to allow them to retire their old gens, and the current focus was to make Manhattanville's 40-foot fleet fully blue and gold. To recap, Manhattanville had 90 LFS hybrids now, 81 from the base order and 9 from the option order. We still need 39 more from the base order and 97 more from the option to reach our grand total of 226. 97, 27, 59, 71, 74, 77, 9800, and 9804, 7 units are on standby. The base and option orders of LFS ATVs will be delivered together and will be completed by early 2022. Yes, remnants of hybrids are expected to come in in early 2022. 
Rumor also has it that the Coneheads and LFS HEV option order may arrive together, as 2021 LFS 8755 has returned to Novabus after five successful months of testing at Jamaica. Usually, when a pilot returns to its maker, it's a sign that the rest of the delivery will soon flow into the city. LFS's 8756 to 8758 are already built, so they could be delivered at any moment now. Oh, but I would have stopped there. But on October 19th, things took a turn for the worse. On the same day that I caught 9700, which was at the time untrackable, it was revealed that one or more of the LFS HEVs experienced an incident where the plug doors opened while in motion. This forced an immediate grounding of all LFS HEVs. This reminded me a lot of the R179's door issue back in January of 2020, which technically jump-started Next Stop News in the first place. Before October 19th was over, 14 out of the 15 Kingsbridge LFS HEVs were sent to Eastchester storage, while most of Manhattanville's 90 LFS HEVs were sent to 126th Street Depot, which has been closed since 2015, for temporary storage. As the LFS HEVs became revenue inactive, 75 next gens were sent from Brooklyn, Queens, and Quill to Manhattanville as long-term loans. Gun Hill sent five next gens to Kingsbridge, Mother Clara Hill sent four old gens, and Quill sent three lithium next gens to Tuskegee. The transferred units are listed here. So Manhattanville got 75 buses to replace 90, some of which were ironically next gens they just recently sent out, Kingsbridge got five buses to replace 15, and Tuskegee got seven buses to replace eight. Manhattanville's next gen count stands at 227, 48 hawkers and 179 lithiums. Kingsbridge count stands at 27, and Tuskegee has 15 next gens and four old gens. Everything is happening in reverse. Seeing the entire LFS fleet shelf like this is incredibly surreal. Nevertheless, Manhattanville received one more option order LFS HEV 9802 after the grounding, making for 91 LFS HEVs and 10 of those being option units. 10 2015 LFSs from Staten Island went to Quill to allow the depot to send 4100s to Tuskegee and Manhattanville. This almost derailed my whole update by the way. I gotta tell you, it was weird seeing Grand and Flatbush Nextions on the M11 and 3990s and 4400s back at the Ville. This event was particularly stunning as I thought that the mass grounding of LFS HEVs back in June was the end of the story and that the HEVs had finally gotten their feet under them after that. Apparently not. This time, things were much worse than before, because back then we only had 31 LFS HEVs. We now have 112. This literally affects all five boroughs. And here I was thinking that Ida's impacts were bad. This is so much worse. The Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens, and Staten Island, which were already running on tight service margins, are now experiencing immense impacts due to this. For the most part, the diesel Excelsiors and LFS has had to hold down the fort for Brooklyn and Queens, as nearly all the Mabistoa depots are currently short on buses. I therefore fear for when Manhattanville and Tuskegee's HEV deliveries are completed. If a future malfunction occurs, that's Manhattanville's ass, as the HEVs will eventually make up their entire fleet. Hell, that's all of Manhattan's ass too. And the M31 is completely finished. To avoid this possibility, out of an abundance of caution, once Manhattanville's order is complete, at least 40 lithium next gens should remain on standby, while Tuskegee keeps around 6 next gens. Kingsbridge and Gun Hill should both keep around 10 next gens. These four depots should retain next gens as a backup fleet for at least four to six months after the delivery phase is completed. That way, if future incidents occur, the HEVs can be taken out of service incrementally and service impacts can be mitigated. 300 buses, man. Volvo, please get this right. My discussion of the Novas has now concluded. On to the new fly XDE40s, a fleet unaffected by the aforementioned issues. Mother Clara Hale received a superstorm of XDE 40s in the 9580s range, 9580, 82, and 9584 to 89, increasing their total by 8 units. They now have 27 XDE 40s total. They only need 9560 to 62 to bring their allotment to 30 buses, which will complete their base order. Quill received his first 2021 Bay XDE 40 9591 on September 13th. This marks the first time that Quill has had XDE 40s in over two and a half years, and the first time that they have had Excelsiors with electric components since the XE 40s left the depot in late June. It also confirmed previous speculation that 9560 to 9589 were indeed for Hale, and 9590 to 9619 were for Quill. I'm glad that the base order of Bay XDE 40s was split up. Instead of being fully delivered to Hale, with the choice to make the bases a 30-30 split, Hale was able to have three types of standard buses, 
and Quill was able to have a temporarily diverse fleet of old gens, Hawker and Lithium next gens, XD40s and XDE40s. It's a shame that the XD40s aren't around to see this, but it is what it is. Quill's XDEs are putting the old gens to rest, which was different from the original plan, which was to have all of Tuskegee's Hawkers replace the majority of Quill's old gens until the XDEs got here. This plan was partially fulfilled, but was sidelined due to former delays at Nova. Alright, enough on what could have been, let's focus on what now is. After 9591 arrives, the XDE-40s began flowing into the depot like an avalanche. Before the month of September was over, they had received 9590 to 92, 94, 97, 9599 to 9600, and 9602 to 9605. As of October 22nd, however, Quill has obtained 27 base order XDE-40s, 9590 to 9610, and 9612 to 9617. They're almost done, bro! The first XDEs to hit service did so on the M42 on September 17th, those being 9590 and 9592. The first 9600 series XDE-40s hit service on September 27th, the same day 9599 hit the M66. 9604 hit the M72 on October 10th. Many people, self-included, were very hyped to see these events occur. Dare I say that some were more excited to see Quill's XDE-40s hit service than they were to see Hale's XDE-40s hit service. New Flyer seems to be on track to have most of the base order of Bay XDE-40s finished by the end of October. Concerning the Allison units, 9510 to 9559 are all built. 9512, 9520, and 9524 should be arriving soon. 9511 and 9513 to 9517 are said to be at the JFK vendor, supposedly assigned to East New York. We still don't know this with 100% certainty, but once the first few units get delivered, we will be able to correctly project this portion of the XDE 40 order. It is likely that they'll be delivered once Quill and Hale finish receiving their XDEs. These Allisons will feature the new Gen E-Flex technology. I speculate that once East New York does get their Allison batch, they'll retire some of their worst next gens or even send some to LaGuardia, like how 4209 was recently sent from Stingle to LaGuardia. I also speculate that once Grand gets their Allison XDEs, they'll retire some of their next gens and send the rest to Queens Village. New Flyer will likely have the Allison order finished by December and the Bay Option order by February or so. We'll just have to wait and see on that one. 2021 XD40 7851 is still in the testing phase, which is going well so far. The XD40 should begin arriving either with the option order XDEs or after all the XDEs are finished being delivered. Flatbush now has only four select bus service schemed XD40s left, those being 76, 23, 45, 51, and 53. 39 out of the 43 active units are all wrapped in the local scheme. They are listed here. Also, four Gun Hill 2019 LFSAs 5563 to 5566 also joined 5568 to 5573 in the local scheme. I'm still trying to inquire as to whether or not 5567 has been wrapped. Also, West Farm's summer shortage appears to have come to an end. They were even able to send out some of their 300 series C40 LFs to Jackie Gleason, so if they don't need the extra buses, that is definitely a good sign. November 2nd will mark a year since West Farms lost all its remaining XD40s, making their standard fleet 100% CNG powered. Alright, all the MTA's bus related news is covered now. On to the subways and railroads and the other systems. After a slight pause in action from August 31st to September 13th, the R211A pilot resumed clearance testing. When we last left off on August 31st, the R211 had tested on Crosstown, aka the G Line. On September 13th, it resumed testing on the C Line, Central Park West. In the days following, 4060 to 64 tested on the BMT Eastern Division lines, J, L, M, and Z, on September 21st and 22nd. 4065 to 69 subsequently tested on the BMT Broadway lines, N, Q, R, and W, on September 17th, 28th, and 29th. This includes 2nd Avenue, C Beach, and even the Franklin Avenue Shuttle. On October 11th, 4065 to 69 returned from Coney Island to Pitkin Yard, technically counting as a test run on the F. The R211A pilot resumed routine testing in the Rockaways between October 15th and October 20th, and then visited East New York on October 22nd for worst case scenario testing before officially going back to Pitkin. I wonder when the R211A pilot will initiate burn-in testing. After two years, the 42nd Street shuttle reopened on September 7th, creating the largest transfer point in the entire subway system. Each shuttle consists became six cars long, 
instead of three or four cars long, which resulted in some Westchester consists being borrowed for the operation, including 1943 and 1949, which I talked about in my first rap video, shameless plug. And now, one of my favorite units, 1908, is in use. In my opinion, the usage of two six-car trains is much simpler and more convenient than two three-car trains and one four-car train. The side platforms were replaced with an island platform, and track three was deleted from existence. As the new platform was pushed further eastward, the track's curvature was slightly reduced, allowing for greater wheelchair accessibility. This provided an opportunity to link Times Square to Bryant Park, combining the ACE, NQ, R, and W with the BD, F, and M. On October 8th, the G used two sets of five car R160Bs from Coney Island Yard, 9928 to 9932 and 9933 to 9937. This marked the beginning of an exciting new trend for the IND Crosstown line. R160s in full-time operation on the G instead of for the GOs only. The 98 and 9900s were systematically transferred to the Crosstown line in the days following. Not only was it confirmed that R160s will be on the G, it was also announced that the G will henceforth be assigned to Jamaica Yard, ultimately doing away with the R46s and R68s on the G, and making Crosstown's fleet 100% R160s, solely new techs. The plan is to shift all 90 R160s left at Coney Island, or 18 train sets in the 9800 to 9900 range, to Jamaica Yard, to give the G the necessary equipment to exist at this new home. The G's going tech, man, let's get it! However, this means that you will no longer see R160s on the NQ and W, as these routes will become fully comprised of 75-foot Smeets. The only R160s you'll see on these routes will be loans from Jamaica, or the daily R-96 that turns into a Q in the AM rush. So, to sum up, Coney Island is losing a route and Jamaica is gaining one. Coney Island will henceforth only host the B, N, Q, and W, while Jamaica hosts the E, F, G, and R. I wonder if we'll see 5 car semen sets on the G soon. This swap is being conducted because it allows for maintenance procedures for the CBTC equipped R160s to be streamlined and consolidated to one yard, according to GJ Hammers. In my opinion, I believe this is beneficial due to the G's increasing level of ridership. I mean, have you seen how many people take the G home from Brooklyn Tech? I was one of them! This provides commuters with more cars and therefore more doorways to enter the train, 20 doorways instead of 16 as well as more opportunity to space out. So, to sum up, whereas Jamaica had 86.53 to 98.52 and Coney Island once had 98.53 to 99.42, Jamaica will soon have all R160s between 86.53 to 99.42, meaning that all five car R160s in the MTA will be based out of this yard. Jamaica will experience fleet expansion, whereas Coney Island will experience fleet reduction. But that's not all. On October 12th, it was also revealed that the B line will soon be heading to Concourse Yard permanently. Concourse is the B's true home anyway in my opinion, so I do support this. Coney Island Yard will soon be solely composed of yellow lines, namely the N, Q, and W, or the BMT Broadway Batch as I call them. As if that weren't enough, it was revealed by DJ Hammers that the R211s are slated to go to Concourse to serve the B and D, while the N, Q, and W will receive X Concourse R68s to retire their R46s. Sorry Broadway, looks like you'll be stuck with 75 footers for quite a while. Combined with the fact that Pitkin and 207, which serve the A and C, will get the base order of R211s, Central Park West could eventually become 100% R179 and R211 in order to support 6th and 8th Avenue CBTC. Damn, this is actually pretty shocking to be honest with you guys. I better start racking up on R46, R68, and R68A footage on Central Park West. We're going very high tech very soon. Honestly, the B and D deserve it. They are one of only four B division lines that has not had a chance to consistently run new tech trains yet, the other two lines being the shuttles. Honestly, I'm not sure if Coney, Jamaica, or East New York will receive R211s at all out of this endeavor, but we'll just have to wait and see. To sum up once more, Coney Island's losing two routes and Jamaica and Concourse are each gaining a route. Coney Island will soon only host the NQ and W, while Jamaica hosts the EFGNR and Concourse hosts the BND. Amtrak had a couple incidents back to back. An Amtrak train had a derailment on BNSF tracks in Montana on September 25th. This was an incident which involved a superliner on the Empire Builder and resulted in 50 injuries and 3 fatalities. There was also a shooting incident on October 5th in Arizona, which involved the same car types, resulting in two fatalities. 
On October 11th, there was a minor derailment of a slow-moving Amtrak train in Washington State as it was bound for Seattle. No injuries were reported, however. On October 12th, a WMATA metro train in D.C. derailed near Arlington on the Blue Line. This resulted in a grounding of all 7,000 series cars from October 17th onward, similar to the grounding of all R-179s back in June of 2020. Roughly 60% of the WMATA's fleet was affected by this, resulting in 30-minute headways. Ooh boy. On October 23rd, 100 Metro riders had to be evacuated after a Yellow Line train experienced a brake issue, which later resulted in many trains being forced to wrong rail. The B-Line system retired one of their Orion 5 shorts, 134, in late August. Its last run occurred on August 20th on Route 16. This is the first Orion 5 short to retire in years. Orion 5 662 was also retired in June due to a fire, making it the first 2006 Orion 5 to retire ever. The 2021 XE35 141 hit service on September 13th on Route 78. However, it experienced a small pause in service from September 16th to October 14th. The first XDE40-399 was delivered to 475 aka Yonkers Garage on October 20th. I can't wait to see it in action, though I am a bit confused as CPTDB indicated that 398-399 to were supposed to be XE40s, not XDE40s. Gillick has been pumping out the BRT pluses to nice like there's no tomorrow. 2021 Gillick CNGs 2027 to 39, 2041 to 45, 2047 and 2049 to 55 were confirmed, bringing Nice's total to 53 Gillicks, 2000 to 2039, 2041 to 45, 47 and 49 to 55. Credit to Tartan D2 on Instagram and others for the imagery and wonderfully keeping track of the order for us. As a result, next gen 1704, 05, 12, 13, 15, 18, 26, 31, 36, 40, 45, 52, 54, 55, 75, 85, 92, and 93 were retired since last month's update, bringing the total amount of confirmed next gens retired by Gillix to 22. 43 1700s have been retired overall. 1709 may also be retired, but this is currently unconfirmed. Next gen 1735 and 1774, which were retired a while ago by the 2021 XN40s, were finally scrapped, as seen here. 1726 was the first next-gen retired by a Gillig to be scrapped. 1708 remains the oldest active next-gen at NICE. Considering that only 27 more Gilligs have to be delivered in order to complete the base order, and 53 are already at Mitchell Field, I believe that Gillig could definitely complete the base order before the end of December. They're the only company, to my knowledge, that's been able to deliver buses to New York this year without any issues. Dashbus received their second new Flyer XE60 902 as early as September 17th, and imagery was released on October 4th. Credit to Lewis Transit Instagram. The age of articulation will soon be reborn in Alexandria. These electrics have the same roof design as our XN60s do, which to be honest is very strange in my opinion, but still appealing nonetheless. They are indeed a proper replacement for the late Neo plans. Remember when I said that Dash will actually receive four more Proteras? They're actually receiving three more of them, not four. It is confirmed that they will be numbered from 807 to 809. 2021 Protera ZX5 807 is confirmed to be built as early as September 17th. This order of Proteras cancelled the initial order of 2021 XE40s. Dash must have really liked those Proteras a lot. I'm down with it. As a needed layer of fleet diversity and eco-friendliness, the last 2005 Orion 5 at Dash 87 may be retired, as it hasn't run since September 24th. Now it's time for featured photos. Here are some photos that were submitted to me for presentation. Shout out to Aaron Mishkin for these photos of the CTA LFSs, and shout out to DevGamer for this image of 9563 on the M7. If you want your photos featured in my updates, feel free to let me know. Fanning Recommendations this month's recommendations are Quill Hail Tuskegee and Queens Village Old Gens, Quill XDE40s, Far Rockaway Yonkers and Spring Creek Prevost, the XMTA bus CLs on Staten Island, the new Next Gens at Manhattanville, the Spectrum 4200s at Queens Village, and that Beeline XDE40 whenever it hits service. Here's a quick schedule update. November to January's uploads are still slated to go as planned, as a bulk of the new hybrid and Prevost deliveries are expected to be delivered within this time frame and the diesels are expected to begin arriving as well. I also have some projects in store for you guys. Credit to all those who provided some of the photos and information used in this video. They will individually be credited in the comments section. If your photo was used and I missed you, please let me know. 
Please subscribe, stay blessed, stay healthy, stay hype, and thank you for riding with Next Stop News.